Hey Alec here, today I want to talk about how to reduce risk as a freelance web developer. There's two things that we can work with. We can reduce the chance that we fail, increase the likelihood of success, and we can build safety nets to reduce how bad it gets when you fail. In this video, I'm going to share with you examples of safety nets that you can use of different methods that you can use to reduce the likelihood that you fail. First of all, let's talk about safety nets. One of the big decisions that you have to make, first of all, is are you going to keep your job? It is true that when you quit your job, there's an expression called burning the boats, which was uh, in the Battle of Troy about 3,000 years ago. After crossing the sea to get to Troy, King Agamemnon decided that they would burn all the boats of his army so that his men had no choice but to win, otherwise they couldn't get back. They would either win or die. When you have no choice but to succeed, you are more motivated, you're more driven, you're going to work harder, you're going to be better, you're, you have no choice, so you're just going to do it. There's some truth to that. However, what I want to let you understand is that you may burn all the boats possible, but still, who knows, maybe you're going to get an accident tomorrow and you're not going to be able to work for the next three months. It doesn't matter if you've burned the boats, you still can't work. Um, there's always going to be a risk of failure. And even if you burn the boats, burning the boats, not getting a job, not piling up money before you freelance, going at it right away. Even if you do have all the motivation in the world, which is compounded by the effect of burning the boats, you still have the problem that maybe you have a bad freelancing plan, maybe you have a bad method. It doesn't matter how much work and effort you put into it, it doesn't matter how much motivation you have, you still have a bad plan, so you still may fail. And so a lot of people end up burning the boats with a bad plan, which leads to them failing, and because they don't have safety nets, the consequences of failure are much bigger. Now the problem with safety nets is that typically building up safety nets takes up your time. You either keep your job, which means that it takes you time during the week to work, which means you have less time on your business and less energy. If you decide to pile up money before you start to freelance and quit your job, well, again, the time you spent piling up money is, is, time, is maybe weeks or months that you spent working that you could have been spending on um, building your freelance business. And the bigger the safety net you have, the less of the burning the boats effect that you have on your motivation, the less that you're, you're going to be driven. So the question is, how do you find the right balance between safety nets and using techniques that will ensure your success? First of all, the question you should ask yourself is what are the real consequences of failure that you can expect if you fail? I mean, if you have kids, do you have kids? I mean, if you fail, the, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Probably you're going to have to just go get a job and, you know, all the money that you're saving or piling up is all money that you could make back anyway if you got a job after failure. But if you have kids, maybe you can't afford to risk failing at all. Another question you have to ask yourself is, if things go wrong, could I just move back in with my parents? Next, you have to ask yourself, you know, it's all good to minimize how bad it is once you fail, but the biggest thing that you have to do is increase the likelihood of success and decrease the likelihood of failure as much as you can. So there's a couple of things that you can do to increase the percentage of chance that you succeed regardless of your level of skill. And first of all, it's choosing a method that allows you to do a lot of reaches to a lot of people, a method that lets you play the numbers game. And the reason for that is that if you choose a method such as maybe be building websites, you build one, one website, and all of your success is dependent on that website. You're basically making one dice roll. If your website is good, cool. You know, you get your clients, everything worked out. If your website is bad, well, you're kind of fucking screwed because you spent all these weeks building that website to attract clients that in the end, the website is not good enough and doesn't bring you clients anyway. What you should do instead is using something that lets you 
play numbers game. The reason you want to do this is because it plays into the law of averages and reversion to the mean. What that means is if you keep rolling the dice, if you keep rolling the dice, the more you roll the dice, on average, the closer your results are going to be to the average. Basically, if you roll the dice 10 times, maybe it's a six-sided dice, you're, you're like likely to have a result between uh, two and five on average if you roll like 10 times. But if you roll like a hundred times, your average of all your rolls is going to be on average much closer to 3.5, which is the average of one to six, than if you just roll a couple of times. The more you roll, the more you contact people, the more times that you can use your method, Overall, the, the closer your results are going to be to the average on average. And you know, techniques like Fiverr, websites, uh, ads can work. But the thing is, I believe that you should, if you want to expect success as a rule and not be dependent too much on the chance factor, is that uh, you need to do it for a longer amount of time than if you're just using a method like cold calling or cold email where you're doing uh, your method several times a day and getting really closer to the law of averages uh, faster. The last thing you want to do is you want to be making sure that you're con contacting the right types of companies. There's some companies that are much more likely of being interested in website services. There's some companies that are much more likely of being interested in paying you more money for your services. If you contact companies that are more likely, more likely to be interested in hiring you, it means that if you contact the same amount of people, more of them on average are gonna be willing to work with you. So it's much safer for you because you need on average to contact way less people to find a job. Also, if you contact people that on average wanna pay you more money, it's good because it means that you need to find less clients to be able to survive. If you can get a client who pays you $3,000, how many of these per month do you really need to be able to survive per year? compared to people who pay you $500. And what a lot of people don't realize is that it's actually not that difficult to find the types of companies who are both willing to pay more money for web development services and are more likely of being interested in web development services than other companies. It's very easy to find these types of companies that, you know, no matter what technique that you use to try to find clients, no matter what, whether you're using Upwork, whether you're using uh, cold email, mechanical outreach, ads, it doesn't matter. If you contact the right people, you will get better results, get to make more money on average. It's very easy to find these types of companies. And actually that information is given away to you for free online. But the thing is a lot of people just don't know how to look for it. And so I made a video uh, last month that shows you how I go about doing quick research that you could do in less than like three hours to figure out in your local area what are the types of companies that you should be trying to work with. Uh, if you wanna see how to do that, it's part of my three-part video series that I made last month on how to find freelance clients as a beginner. I'm showing you in this series, first of all, how to find the right types of companies to contact, and second of all, how to contact them in the right way uh, using a method that gives you the highest likelihood of success possible, even if you have no degree, no experience. So if that's what you are interested in, if you wanna see that video, I'm gonna put a link right here where you can go check it out. Just click here if you wanna see them. I'll also put a link to this in the description. With that said, I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you soon. Take care.